It's difficult to know what Egyptians understood by God. Up until recently, we've tried to explain Egyptian mythology using our own religious concepts and way of thinking. And that was a mistake. The main error was not to differentiate between the written language, hieroglyphs and drawings, and the oral language, which was the most important one. Regrettably, we don't have any sound records available. During more than 3,000 years, the Egyptians developed and perfected their cosmology. But their biggest obsession was to implore the gods to ensure eternity by overcoming the earthly death. One of the most interesting concepts of the Egyptians' religious ideology was Maat. Maat is order, justice, truth. It's usually represented as a feminine deity with an ostrich feather. But Maat is actually order, just as it was established by the Demiurge, or Ra, in the moment of creation. Ancient Egypt was a mythological world in which its inhabitants feared to lose cosmic order. For that would lead them to the primeval chaos and prevent them from achieving their eternal destiny in the magic world of the gods. But in order to maintain the balance between those two worlds and be able to travel between them, they had to use the same tool the gods used, magic. One of the most important aspects of Egyptian religion is, undoubtedly, the connection between magic and religious beliefs. The Egyptians could not understand one without the other. Every aspect of Egyptian life is connected with religion and therefore with magic. The Creator God will, through the spoken word, create the world and materialize what the ancient Egyptians perceived as magic. Whenever they didn't understand some thing or action that had happened, they would always resort to magic because they couldn't comprehend a supernatural event that wasn't related with their earthly lives. The important thing was that those texts and rituals that can be found in the texts of the pyramids and later in the texts of the sarcophagus were said out loud. That's the importance of the spoken word. Word. The only way for magic to really be understood and materialized is through the spoken word. The ones in charge of performing magic were the great wizard, the pharaoh, and the priests. But communication with the gods was limited to the only mortal that possessed the magic powers needed. The living god, the pharaoh. I am Muser Matre Satapende, Ramses Meriamon. I come from Ra and was created by my father, Men Madre. The Almighty Himself made me great when I was a child until I reigned. The Great Ones kneeled before me when I was empowered, both as the elder son and as prince heir to the throne of Geb. Twice a year, and thanks to the location of the temple of Ramses II, the sun illuminates the little sanctuary. The king is illuminated by Ammon and Ra, the two divine forms that pass on to the sovereign the light he needs to preserve his divine nature. The temples were one of the possible connections between the real world and the world of the gods. The other one was, of course, the tombs and funeral temples. The rituals and the magical ceremonies had to take place in a space where they could communicate with the gods. A place where the gods' material self could be smothered with attentions and worshipped. An Egyptian temple was not a place where the believers went to communicate with their god or pray to him, as it happens in a Christian church or a Muslim mosque. It was the sacred home of the gods. Access to the temple was completely off limits to the common people, who could only enter the first courtyard. The rest of it was reserved to the priests 
and of course, the pharaoh. Although the pharaoh was the one in charge of maintaining the universal order and the cult to the gods, the offerings made in the temples actually had to be made by another type of person, delegates of the pharaoh. In order to maintain an adequate cult to the deities in all of Egypt's temples, those delegates were the priests. The most important ceremonies and rituals that took place in the Egyptian temples were carried out in this chapel. In the Sancta Santorum of each temple, the most recondite and secret place of the cultural building. However, the preparation for the ceremonies and the actual ceremonies themselves started long before dawn. The priest would enter this chamber and approach this tabernacle where the statue of the god was kept. In the precise moment, the sun rays would rise in the horizon. 